Other numbers are numbers. So we have 3 pi. What is pi? 3.14. Okay, so that's a number. If, if it helped you to work through the problem, you could do 3 times 4 point, or 3 times 3.14. Okay, you get 9.22. I think that's right. No, 42. 9.42. 9.42 times d equals 12 times pi, whatever that is. Okay. But it doesn't need to be done. You don't have to multiply that out. Because when we have a number times d or x or whatever, we don't want that number times x. What number would we like to have multiplied by d, Aiden? We would like a 1 there. I do that to make that a one, Aiden. So you divide both sides by three. Divide by three, also divide by pi. Right? What's three divided by three? One. And pi divided by pi? One. Right? Divide by three pi. Four. Pi divided by pi is pi. Pi. one. So those guys divide each other out to one. And twelve divided by three is four. So d is four. Six. Other ones from 121. If you don't remember the numbers you had problems with, that's why I said make a note of the numbers that you had questions <laughs> about. Aiden? I think it's number nine on 1.2. Okay. So are we ready to remove on 1.2? Nothing from 1.1 is left? have our notes out. I mean, if we're having trouble and we want to learn something from the trouble that we had, we should take notes. tell why you got them wrong, then put a little note down, 1.2 number 9, I'm going to ask a question about that, and we're going to go over that, and we're going to take notes. So let's take notes. Turns out you got it wrong, then now you know. So something that we could do, we're trying to get H by itself, so what is something that we could do to get closer to having H by itself? Um, that's minus 11. number minus this number plus 11 minus 11 is, what's plus 11 minus 11? Zero. Zero. So on this side, so far, we've got 2 thirds h minus 1 third h. Of course, we have to subtract 11 on both sides. I get a 3. Okay, good start. So that's a good thing. We've got, the only things left on this side have h is their h terms. Two-thirds of an H minus one-third of an H one must be one-third one of an H. Very good. One-third times H equals negative three. Aiden? Divide. Divide. <coughs> By what? One-third. By one-third. see. Is that a good idea? What's one-third divided by one-third? I mean, times three. 
is not zero. One eight. Times one three ones. Yeah. What's one third about about one third? Is my question. Two six. Zero. Zero. One. One. Sorry. One. One third divided by one third is one. Just like five divided by five is one. Three divided by three is one. Negative two divided by negative two is one. Anything divided by itself is one. That seems like we made a good choice there then, right? Oh. One times h, that's nice. One times h is just h. So whatever we get on the other side must be h. Must be what h is equal to. And then we have negative three divided by one third. How do we divide by a fraction? Divide by one third. Same three hands over and over. Ah, right here. One by one third. Yeah, one of the same three. I already heard from you. Bring you up. Oliver? You um, multiply the reciprocal. Okay, so to divide by one third and multiply by the reciprocal, which looks like what? Uh, one three. One three. <laughs> What's one three? Uh, three firsts, three ones, times. Three firsts. There's three firsts. I don't know yeah. Three, firsts are. three ones. That's three ones. Yeah. Three ones. Times three ones. Times three ones. Mm-hmm. Negative three ones. Which one is negative? Because. One third h equals negative three. But which of these is negative? Okay, yeah. so negative three times three over one. Negative three divided by one third is the same as negative three times three over one. Could write this over one, but we'll just have the denominator of one, which is we don't really need that. It's not going to change anything. So negative three times three, negative nine. Anything there, you all just one step at a time. First, we subtracted 11 from both sides, got rid of that constant that's added on there. Then we notice they're both h terms, right? They're both the same kind of thing. This is two thirds of an h, this is one third of an h. We subtract, they have a common denominator, as Sarah said. <coughs> so we get one third h. And then to have one times h, we divide by one third. It's the same as multiplying by three, we can multiply by three instead. Molly? I still don't um, understand how the two-third h and the negative one-third h can be um, Just collecting like terms, so what if it was a 5h minus 2h, what would that be? It would be 3h. Right, 5h minus 2h is 3h, because you did this, you take 5 minus 2, times h, right? So you would multiply um, two thirds and, and negative one third, and then put that as h. Did you multiply five and two here? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, you would subtract it, and then you would put that next to it. Right, so oh wait, no, I understand that. <laughs> so two thirds minus one third is okay. Divided by one yeah. third. Now I get it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Got it. <coughs> All right. Got that cleared up. More questions? Go. We get to get ready to everything away. Take a homework review then. Um, we have one question. No, I don't have any. 
What did you do with the two thirds H? We had two thirds H. Yeah. Like two. Like imagine this is H. And this whole thing is H. Uh -huh. Two thirds times H is the same as saying like two thirds of H. Right, so like this much of H minus one third of H. Right, so I'm going to take this third away from these two thirds. So I'll take this third out. What am I left with? I'm left with a third of H. A third of H. So you just moved on and then you're in the other in the problem. You dropped it. No, but I just took two thirds H minus one third H. This is what I did here. Two thirds minus one third. What's two thirds minus one third? One third. One third. Yeah. H. Okay. Just like five H minus two H. In our minds, we never write this down, but we can say five minus two is three, right? And that's what I have. I have three H. Same thing here. Two thirds H minus one third H. Two thirds minus one third is one third, so I have one third. So we either have more questions or we're going to move on to the homework review. So which is it? Sounds like homework review to me. Okay. Stop me if that's not the case. Starting off slow here. Negative 6 plus x equals 8. If you don't realize this is the same thing, negative 6 plus x or x minus 6 is the same thing. Okay. So what shall we do? How will we get x by itself? Yeah. Um, well, since it's minus 6, you have plus 6. And then you do it to the other side, it equals 9. Do it to both sides. Why do we do it to both sides? To balance it balance. To make it, well, not to make it balance, right? It's already balanced. It's already not balanced. And we keep it balanced. Keep it balanced. Okay. Uh, and why are we adding 6? What happens when we add 6 on the left side? We get Zero is good to add to things because they don't change anything. So x plus zero is x, and a plus six is fourteen. X is fourteen. Number two. All right. When it's talk, when it's about adding and subtracting, it's nice to add zero. When we are multiplying, it's nice to multiply by what? It's nice to have what times x? One. One. one times x. How do we get a one times x? Eda? Multiply by seven over four. Of course, on both sides. We're going to keep it balanced here. So we get 28 over 28, or seven divided seven, we get one. Four divided four, we get one. Either way we look at it, we get one x. And how did you, how do you go about multiplying these two together? Molly? Um. Well, first you would like simplify it um, with the 16 and the 4. 4 goes into both of them. So yes. 16 would turn into 4, and the 4 would turn into 1. Good. And you continue multiplying across, across. the top. And 4 times 7 is 28, and 1 times 1 is 1. So well, we don't need to write over 1, or if we did write over 1, it would just, well, we're just dividing by 1. That doesn't change anything. Yeah. 1 times x equals 28 divided by 1. So. It's as good as saying x is 28. Quit. Multiplying by the, what's it called? We're multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. Yeah, I just probably forgot that, that uh, I got that wrong. You <laughs> might stick with me now, and you see a fraction times x, you might multiply by the reciprocal. <laughs> I hope you don't quit, Kyler, because that's a long. Don't press the reset button. Why? Your calculator? Good thing to, is it yours or mine? It's mine. Do whatever you want. What does it do? <laughs> yeah, it, it just clears the memory and stuff. It's not good to just press the reset just because. I have some that don't work anymore, I think, because the reset buttons are stuck. Dude, if you press clear and on, all right, so what we have here is called a two-step equation. Yeah, really, two things that we would need to do to isolate x. Add seven. Add seven. We have 
have 4x plus 0 equals a positive 3. Then we divide by 4. Yeah. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Because 4 divided by 4 one is 1. So one just put x equals. What if you don't put the 1 x? Yes! If you just write x, of course it's correct. Oh, what if I okay. run? Wait, can we simplify it down? What if you put Writing as a decimal does not mean it's simplified. It just means it's a decimal. Well, I mean, would it be fine if you wrote it as a decimal? If it's a decimal, as long as that decimal is exact, here's where you're going to lose credit. Yeah. For example, x equals one third, and when you say it's 0.33, that's wrong. It's not 0.33. It is 0.3 repeating, so if you did that, that would be all right. But I think at this point it's easier to just write one third. Does the repeating ever stop? No, that's why it's called repeat. That's how it's infinite. But no, I mean, it, it's kind of a heavy thing to think about, but it does never end forever. Which is the only way for this decimal to be equal to one third. It's also the reason that 0.9 repeating is equal to one. So remember that when you distribute this negative 3, negative times positive is negative. Don't forget about the x. Negative 6 is an x. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Okay, distribution. That certainly is something. It's not nothing, and I think it's going to help us to proceed. Aiden? And then you subtract 12. Okay, you subtract 12. Yeah. Oh. So let's see, 5 minus 6x equals negative 43. Yeah, I think I got this one wrong. Yeah, I forgot the So then what do you do? Minus negative 5 minus negative 5? Yeah. Minus negative 5? Plus. Yeah. Minus 5. Minus 5. This I is meant, a 5. I meant minus 5. Okay, minus 5. Negative 6x equals negative 48. Yes. Then you do negative six x minus negative forty eight. Uh, minus negative forty eight. Divided by negative six. Yes. Negative six. I got that right this two times. I did it all. Negative forty eight divided by negative six. Eight. Positive eight. Oh, oh my God! So close. Close. Yeah, I got so close. Yeah, I did. Remember, find a negative number. What we're going for is a positive 1 times x. You don't have to write the 1, but that is what we need it to be. We don't want it to be negative 1 times x, so it needs to be 1 times x. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is a positive 1 times x. Okay, any questions about any of these things done? I would highly recommend that when I'm working through these with you, you should really be taking notes. It's another opportunity to 
learn. Learn or relearn or reaffirm or make better your abilities in all these areas. Okay? Just sitting and watching. Maybe that's your style, but it's not most people's style. Most people style. need to write it down. Style. The act of writing it down helps them to channel those neural pathways. Okay? These are the kinds of questions that just hinder us from progressing. If we have free time, I'd be glad to explain things like that if I know the answer. Find like terms at some point in the equation itself. Printer, please know. Okay, here's. Uh, why? Why all the talking? This is your homework right here. This is your way of I'm just going to talk, and, and if you want to be quiet and listen, that's up to you. Imagine that you earn $9 an hour. So let's just imagine that you worked 13 hours in a week. How would you calculate how much you made that week? 13 hours you worked. You would multiply that by 9 dollars $9 per hour. Times 13 hours. An hour divided by hour. One hour divided by one hour is one. And so you have nine times 13 is the amount of money that you earn, which is 90 plus 27. So 107, $117. Okay, so you get the basic idea of how to calculate how much you earn. Yeah. Let's imagine that on Monday you worked four hours. On Tuesday, you work three hours. Okay. On Wednesday, let's say you forgot how many hours you work. On top of all this, stop talking. On top of all this, you earn fifteen dollars in tips. All tips. And altogether, you earn a hundred dollars and fifty cents. What we're trying to figure out is how much do we work on Wednesday? And you still make $9 homework? Yeah, $9 an hour. No. And you also have this added on $15. So we're going to write an equation. The equation could be write, where clearly this would be something like X, right? Sarah? Well, I guess you could try like um, 
plus 15, or just put 15, and then um, like 9, and then in parentheses, like 4 and 3, maybe? 4 and, four and 3, what do you mean by 4 and 3? Um, times 3, and minus 4 divided by 3. Four plus three. Four plus three. Well, that would be that would kind of make sense, right? Because you've added the, your hours all together, totaling up all of the hours that you work, right? And then so plus X. And you work X hours. Yeah. Okay. So if we added up all the hours and multiply by nine, we get some money. Then we add fifteen dollars for the money we made in tips. And you get this. And it equals hundred dollars and fifty cents. Hundred dollars and fifty cents. Wait, so that equals 60. Whoa, we have homework. 9 times 7 equals 60. Yeah, what would you do, Aiden? So we get uh, 63 plus 9x plus 15. The bell rang, Mr. Fuller. I'm going to keep you. And then you subtract it. Subtract 15 from both sides. But we also subtract 63 from both sides. So 100.5 minus 15 minus 63. It's what? You sure? Yeah. yeah, that's what I got. Okay, and then? Divide by nine. Divide by nine. And X is two point five. All right. See you later. Have a good day.